We get into today's classwork contemplations. We are going to talk all about, well, a lot about simple and compound interest. We're not going to do it all today. We're going to save some for our next lesson as well. But understanding the difference between simple and compound interest is really the key to financial freedom and financial independence. Um, we need to be able to do the calculations with all of them. We'll understand what kind of functions they are um, as the unit proceeds. But for today's purposes, I want you to be able to um, do calculations in simple interest and the, the varial, various ways that that can be done and, and hint at the difference between it and compound interest. And that'll be far enough to take you today. The next lesson will um, tweak a little bit with simple interest in terms of talking about what kind of function it is. And then with compound interest, we'll do a lot of calculations on the next lesson. So without any further ado, simple interest. Simple interest goes by the formula I equals PRT. And I first taught about simple interest when I taught seventh grade for a couple of years back in the 19, early 1990s. I remember the Rangers won the cup and we took the class out to watch the parade. Uh, on, in the library on the TV, it was such a monumental moment. It was the, the first time in 50 years, and I do believe the first time, it was 54 years, the first time they won, and they haven't won since. So it's like once in 76 years, so I could miss one class to watch that parade or two classes. Now, I equals principal times rate times time, and what we used to tell the kids back then is I equals PERT. PERT. P-R-T. I is the interest, P is the principal, and that principal means how much you're starting with. And you know, for years I used to write this principal PLE because I, I learned in school that the principal is my pal. Um, and the thing is, yes, that's the correct way to spell the principal of the school, but it is also the correct way to spell principal when it comes with money. So PAL is the correct spelling, and for many, many years I did it wrong and I did PLE. Um, R is the rate of interest, always expressed as a decimal. And T is the time always in years. That can get tricky if they say six months. You have to convert it to a half a year like that. So I equals PRT. I equals PERT. I stands for interest. P is the principal, the amount of money you're starting with. R is the interest rate as a decimal. And T is the time in years, always in years. So here's a very simple situation. <laughs> different families do things different ways. But... Um, particularly years ago, it was far more traditional for you to be loaned the money for your car by your family, not to be given the car. Uh, nowadays, a lot of young people kind of expect to be given a car. Um, and you do get loaned the money for the car. And if you go real old school, particularly if you borrow from your grandparents, you might get a little interest attached to your loan. So let's do one of those examples. Todd, desperate for a new car, borrows $7,500 from his grandfather at simple interest for four years at 3% interest per year. How much interest does Todd owe? How much money does Todd owe? If Todd agrees to pay the money back in 48 months, how much does Todd pay in each month? Okay, so... Um, Let's do part A. How much interest does Todd owe? Give it a shot without me. Then I'll go. I'll show you the answer in just a minute. Okay. So I equals PERT, principal times rate times time. The principal is 7,500. That's how much money he borrows. It's 3% interest, but I have to convert that to a decimal. Remember, decimal L, two places to the left, 0 0.03, and four years. And when you do that on a calculator, you do 7,500 times 0 0.03 times 12, you come up with $900. So that's the interest that he would pay over four years. How much money does Todd owe? Well, he owes the $900 interest plus the money he borrowed. He doesn't only give grandpa back 900 bucks. You also have to give back the borrowed money, which is 900 plus 7,500, which is $8,400. And if Todd agrees to pay the money back in 48 months, how much does Todd pay back each month? Hmm. Well, he's got to pay back a total of 8400 bucks, right? And he's got to do that in 48 months. So 8400 divided by 48 is $175 per month. So 
That is a very standard, simple interest kind of question, and it's not every variation off of it, but it's got two of them in there, and then a third if you consider how much you pay per month. So let's do a little bit more with this um, I equals PRT, or simple interest work. Here are two questions to do right here. Let's have you do question number one, and then we'll go over the answer to number one, and then we'll have you try question number two. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, so on the first one, I equals PERT. So the principal is $5,000. The interest rate is 2.5%. So I need to convert that to a decimal point 0 0.025. And it's only one year that it's staying in there. So 5,000 times 0 0.025 times 1. And that tells me $125 is the interest that will be earned sitting in the bank. Okay, next up, number two, to buy a car, just borrowed 15,000 for three years at an annual simple interest rate of 9%. How much interest will she pay if she pays the entire loan off at the end of the third year? And what's the total amount she will repay? So, go ahead, try number two. Okay, so, Again, I equals PERT, I equals PRT. So the principal in this problem is 15,000 times 0 0.09, which is 9% times three for three years. I crunch those numbers and I come up with $4,050. So how much interest does she pay at the end of the third year? She pays $4,050. What's the total amount she has to repay? Well, she also has to pay back the 15,000. So altogether, she has to pay back $19,050. Okay. Well, I got three more for you to do. Let's do the first one. Go ahead. Just, just do number three. Okay. So we know I equals PERT. And in this case, it's $6,000 in a bond, 3%. But now they do something a little different. You see, here's a little variation here. They tell you that she earns $450 in interest. How long was the money invested? So if I substitute in properly, the $6,000 still goes for P. The 3% is still 0 0.03. But the four fifty dollars goes in for the interest. It goes in the I place. And then the variable T is actually on the right-hand side here at the end of the problem. So 450 equals 180 because 6,000 times 0 0.03 is 180, T. Then I divide both sides by 180, and T works out to be 2.5. So you can use the formula, and you most often do, to find the interest or possibly how much you have to pay back or how much is in the account. Or they can tell you how much you earned in interest and kind of work it backwards and reverse engineer how long the time or, in some cases, how long what the interest rate had to be. For example, let's try number four, where they ask you exactly that. What is the interest rate? And there is a trick in number four. So I want you to think carefully about number four before you submit your final answer. Like they would say on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Is that your final answer? Think it through. Go ahead. Okay, so I equals PRT. There's the tricky part. The interest earned is 2320 Now, you might have thought it was 10320 but that's what he repaid total. So if he borrowed 8000 and he repaid 10320 then the interest is the difference between what he borrowed and what he pays back. So that's 2320 That will equal 8000 times the interest rate, which we don't know, times four years. Now, if I do the 8,000 times four years, I get 32,000, R, R, of course. Then I have to divide by 32,000, and R comes out to be 0 0.0725, which expressed as a percent, because that's how we express decimal, uh, pardon me, interest rates, is 7.25%. Okay, try number five.
A little more I equals pert. Go ahead. Okay, so I equals pert. It's the interest is going to equal 1,000 because it's $1,000 that they deposit. Three and a quarter percent interest, so 0 0.0325 times 18 years. When I crunch those numbers, I get 585 bucks. So that's how much interest he's earned. It is not how much he will have in the account. How much is in the account? Well, that's the original thousand that was deposited. The bank does not get to keep that. <laughs> Plus the 585 earned in interest for a total of $1,585. So these are some nice questions about simple interest. And you can bet that on your next quiz or on your next test that you're going to have lots of nicey, nice questions on simple interest. And it's all wonderful to know about and so on and so forth. But the truth of the matter is that not many things in life work with simple interest. Um, your economy is driven by compound interest. And that's what you really need to know about. Now, all I want to cover for the next little bit of our lesson is the difference between simple and compound interest. I'll make that a separate video and we'll pick up at this point in that video.